Hi, I'm Jack, and welcome back, because today I'm going to give you guys my review for the second season of a Star Wars Disney Plus show that came to a close last week, Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 2. There will be some spoilers ahead, mainly in the last half of the video, so keep that in mind. Let me know down below in the comment section what is your opinions. Yeah, I'd love to know that. And with that said, let's get started. The season takes place months after the events of Season 1 as we follow the Bad Batch continue their journey navigating the galaxy post Order 66 after the fall of the Republic. They will cross paths with new allies, new enemies as they take on new missions and get caught up in a conspiracy revolving around the clones. I'm going to go straight to the point with this one. Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 2 is a tale of two halves for me. There's the first half of the season, which was pretty mediocre and one of the worst first halves I've ever seen to a Star Wars TV season in general. But then the back half of the season is great with some of the show's best episodes and one of the best back halves for a Star Wars Disney Plus show and TV show in general that came out of Star Wars in recent years. So... It's a really weird season because it's so half and half where I think the highs of the season were significantly higher than the highs of last season, but the lows were a lot lower than the lows of last season. So um, it's really interesting to see how this whole season played out, but for what it is, it's good. I liked the voice acting once again by D. Bradley Baker. He really plays all these clones so well with a distinct voice, distinct personality, and how they play, play off one another is very good and compelling. And he does another fantastic job yet again. And Michelle Eng is very good as Omega this season. Once again, the rest of the voice cast is very solid here. And one thing I love about Bad Batch is the animation style. This has been an animation style utilized since The Clone Wars, which was a really well-animated TV show. And once again here, the animation is stunning. It's gorgeous from the character models to the locations and the creatures and how it animates all these different locations they go to. It's very compelling. And I love how they bring these characters to life in this animation style. It is a very good animation style for Star Wars. And once again, it is fantastic for season two. Something this season did a lot of improvements in is giving more characterization to characters like Tech and Echo. They don't do that much in Season 1 compared to characters like Omega, Hunter, and Crosshair. So to see Echo and Tech get a lot more spotlight this season is really nice. It made me really appreciate Tech and Echo a lot more on this show. And they got a character arc that got so much more to do and showcase what both characters are good at, give them both a say in the situations they are put into and how these characters grew over the course of the season is very good. And it made me really appreciate Tech a lot more as a character because I wasn't too thrilled with how they utilized him in season one. And it made me really happy that season two gave him so much more to do with his relationship with Omega and his relationship to the crew, what he brings to the crew. And so I was just using his smarts and his really good use of technology on display here. And where it ends up with him is heartbreaking with where they go with tech. And he just became one of the show's best characters thanks to season two. Echo, while doesn't get as much to do as tech per se, he does get a lot more here than in season one. And I really like how we've seen him go from just being a new member of the Bad Batch since the end of the Clone Wars Bad Batch arc. And now he wants to help the clones all over the galaxy because of this new phase of the galaxy after Order 66. He wants to help the clones, but he also wants to help people fight back against the Empire because they would cause all sorts of problems for the people all over the galaxy. And I like that. Even though it could have been built up upon better to lead up to where we go with Echo, I like the ideas we had here with these characters and how both of them got to be utilized is very good. Wrecker also gets more to do here. Funny, strong, and I just really like Wrecker. He's the comedic relief character and he always does a good job of being useful when he needs to be with his muscles, his funny moments every now and then even just his heartwarming relationship with the crew is very good too and hunter is good omega is good both characters still get good focus every now and then even if the season 
does give a lot more screen time to characters like Tech. But my favorite character of the season, without a doubt, is Crosshair. Crosshair's storyline in season one was the highlight because he was the most compelling character with how he's the only member of the Bad Batch that stayed behind to work for the Empire and bring upon their mission and how that puts him in the conflict with everybody I really liked a lot. And when he is in an episode of Bad Batch season two, it is a great episode, nevertheless, with my favorite episode of the season being episode 12, The Outpost with Crosshair, when he is dispatched to go serve on a mission, and it is incredible. I think Crosshair is by far, to this day, he is still my favorite character to come out of this show. He's the most interesting, compelling, and just the story he goes on here where he's dealing with the fact that he let the Bad Batch go at the end of season one. And so as telling the Empire that the Bad Batch are dead just to keep them safe as Crosshair stays behind for the Empire. And then over the course of the season, Crosshair realizes that Hunter was right all along, that the Bad Batch really were being the right here with all the stuff going on, where he sees this season how the Empire treats the clones and how because of that, it makes him realize that he can't stand for this anymore and how it's like the clones are his brothers. Even if he's so different compared to everyone else, he wants to help them and he sees how the Empire treats them and all the stuff they've been doing. And it makes him really think of his allegiance like is what he's doing the right thing. And his character arc here is beautiful. Like I said, episode 12 is my favorite episode of the season. And what we do with Crosshair this season... I really like from the story perspective. And my only issue with it is there was so little of him. He was only in the season for like five episodes, I guess. And compared to like this whole season, I was really underwhelmed with the lack of Crosshair because he's my favorite character of the show. He's the most interesting character. And it just feels really weird to me that they took their best and most interesting character and then sidelined him for so much of the season to a point where you never saw him for a really long time. And I wish we got more of him because the story was so interesting and I like where he ends up, but I wanted so much more of him than what we got because Crosshair is so great as a character and he is so good this season. The season has a much more darker, mature tone than season one did, which I really appreciate. It gave the season, mainly in the back half, a sense of stakes, urgency, tension to where the Bad Batch needs to be very careful. And because of the whole storyline with the clone conspiracy and what the Empire is trying to do with them, I love that storyline. I like the idea of it. And for what we got out of it, I liked where it goes. It continues to make it feel like the show is starting to add an overall story idea and a sense of danger for the clones all across the galaxy because this is a show that is set directly after the Clone Wars. And just seeing, once again, clones, what do they do? How do they feel about this? The Empire's utilization and behavior to them. And some of the show's best episodes were all involved in the clone conspiracy storyline where politicians, people in the galaxy are trying to figure out what's going on with the clones, whether it's on the side of the Empire or the clones themselves. And once we got to episode seven and eight, the season really kicks into high gear with the clone conspiracy two-parter with the characters finding out what's going on. And from that point on, the season really kicks into high gear. And I really liked whenever the show focuses on it, because there's some of the greatest scenes, episodes that come out of the show, we're all part of the storyline, and where it ends up is tragic. It's a really sad way to end the season, considering all that happened throughout the season and in the episodes prior. So it really does take the show in a different direction and a level compared to season one, which a little, a little bit more lighthearted than this season was. And I'm really curious to see where they go with this in season three because of the cliffhanger it left us on. However, that brings me to my issues with the season. And the first half is nowhere near the level of the back half of the season. It starts off on a really weak note. I wasn't too big on the idea of them kicking off the season with a two-parter Mission of the Week episode, which was fine. But in the long run, it just didn't add anything. 
And that's what a lot of the first half of the season felt like to me, except for episode three, where it's just the Bad Batch going somewhere for a mission, and they have to do something, and then by the end of the episode, they accomplish it. And it was cool to see characters like Gunji appear again, but in the long run, it doesn't really continue what happens there, nor does it really show what happened with Gunji and the other characters. So I watched the first half of the season, and... It just didn't feel eventful. It feels like it was lacking energy or tension for me to ever feel like these characters are in danger because the first half of the season was very formulaic, but in a way where it's like nothing is happening in the long run. I could skip this episode and nothing is changing. And that's not really a great thing when even at least if you at least have some character change over the course of that first half, then it would have been a lot better for me. But these episodes were just boring they didn't really add anything and they just highlight my problems i had with season one and to an extent they doubled down upon it in the first half of the season and it wasn't until midway through to the back half where the season really improves on the stuff that i had issues with in that first season and in the first half of this season nevertheless and so I really hope that in season three, they cut down on these mission of the week episodes or at least make them compelling or just focus on the main overall story, especially with where season two left off. So season three is the chance for them to finally make an amazing season all around. And I hope that if they're going to do mission of the week episodes again, then shake things up, do some things different than what it feels like those Mission of the Week episodes have done, because while I'm not too big of a fan of them for season one, season two, not so different here. I still feel like they just really are the bottom of the barrel in terms of Bad Batch content. Overall, I liked Star Wars The Bad Batch season two. It has improved on aspects about season one, but it also doubles down on some of my issues with that, that season. And I came away with the season that's a tale of two halves. It's great, it's okay, but I love what it does with characters like Crosshair, Tech, and some of the episodes are very good and some of the best in Star Wars animation. And while I wanted a lot less Mission of the Week episodes and more episodes on the great storyline with the clone conspiracy. I walked away satisfied with Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 2. So in the end, I'm going to give Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 2 a B. Tech's death was heartbreaking. I don't know if I see the show deciding to do a plot twist later on where it turns out he is alive, but... His death was heartbreaking with everything he goes through. He had to make a sacrifice and his final quote of... When have we ever followed orders? No! It can't be! No! No! Tragic. I actually really was upset when they killed off Tech because I was really loving him this season. And so as the ending, I'm finally happy they left Sid. But I knew from episode four, she was going to rat them out to the Empire at some point. And I knew it was going to happen when it did in the finale. And I hope this means no more Sid because now she became one of the most unlikable Star Wars characters ever. And it just made sense they finally left her midway way through the season. And... Omega's been captured by the Empire, and apparently the Doctor is her sister. And now she's stuck in the same facility as Crosshair, and now it's Hunter, Echo, and Wrecker. Just those three, and they're going to do whatever it takes to find Omega. I'm really intrigued to see, see where they go with that in Season 3. I hope they really capitalize on that well, because it's a really dark ending rather than how season one ended. So I'm really hoping that if we get a season three, which I would want to see, that they really improve on aspects of the season, but really explore that whole storyline here because I liked where that went in season two. And I really hope season three capitalizes on the great ideas and potential it has because Tech's death is heartbreaking. Sid rats them out to the Empire, and now the Bad Batch status quo has really changed by the end of the season. So I'm looking forward to a season three when we get it. So yeah, 
That's my review for Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 2. What are your thoughts on the season? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Stay tuned for some upcoming videos I plan very soon. I'm going to have a review for The Last of Us Season 1 at some point. And soon I'm going to be seeing the Super Mario Bros. movie and air. So stay tuned for all that fun stuff coming your way very soon. And don't forget to follow me on social media. My username is down below at the bottom of the screen and in the description below. So please go do that while you're at it. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button. And stay tuned for more.